In this video, I'd like to show you how to connect an external image editing program to Blender, say Photoshop or Krita, so that you can paint textures as well as do some advanced techniques like projection mapping of textures onto objects. It's actually pretty easy to set up. You go to the Edit menu and click Preferences. Go to File Paths, and in Applications at the bottom, you set the path for the executable of the image editor of your choice here. And all Blender does is open that editor and keeps track of like the saved file in there when you open it. Uh, this can be tricky to set up. You may need to do some other research to know how to find the executable for your program on your operating system. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do a video specifically on that if you're having trouble. But once you close that, that's already set up there and you can test and see if you've got the path correct by going into an image editor pane, making a, a new image. We can call this one just color. Um, save your Blender project first so that you have sort of an anchor for Blender to know where you want to save things. And after you do that, save your image as well, just in that same directory. And once you have that, you can go into the image tab here in the in the image editor and choose edit externally and if it's working correctly if it can find the program it will launch that program and once it's launched this is that same texture that we just saved and you know you can paint on it save it and if you want to then refresh over here you can press alt r and that'll refresh it in Blender and update it to any objects that have that texture attached, which is great. And that's kind of you know the traditional way of of painting on on these things is, is you either do it like procedurally with shaders, or you kind of hand paint through this. But I find it really hard, especially on complex models, to paint effectively on uh, a UV map. It's really nice if you can get the context of what you're painting, and Blender actually has a fantastic way to do that as well. In order to do that though, let's set up some things first so it works the way that we want it to work. The, the first thing we can do is go to the shader for this object. We can shift A to add an image texture, connect that to the base color, and we're going to pr bring in that color texture. And actually, instead of having this for uh, principal BSDF, I'm going to route this through um, an emission shader because we don't want the lighting information on this when we bake it we don't want to bake in the the shadows from this lighting and so for now we're just going to preview it with an emission shader that dumps all the lighting and we want to set up our workspace too since we did a 1024 by 1024 texture let's make our camera have that shape for its output and let's actually go and grab our camera we can use this little button here to lock the camera to the view so we can move it around. Oops, there we go. So then the, the camera follows whatever position we are in here. Uh, one more thing I want to do though, this has quite a bit of perspective distortion because of the focal length of the camera. So if we go to um, object mode and select the camera in the camera settings here under this data tab, you can set the focal length, which is like the zoom of the lens kind of. Um, I'm going to set it to 200, which shows like it's, it's zoomed in, it's made everything bigger, but what that also does is reduce, it reduces the distortion from the lens. Notice how this feels flatter, more close to like an orthographic view. And for painting, I like that better, so there's, there's just not as much distortion in, in what we're doing. Okay, so we've got a pretty good view there. Um, I'm going to turn off the camera, locking the camera to the view so I can shift this over a bit here because I'm going to open up now the uh, tool. Oh wait, we need to go first into, uh, if you select the box again and go back to texture paint. Now the tool is, it's the tool options for this draw brush here. If you go down to options, external, set the screen grab here. So this is going to make a new image for us to use as a projection. We're going to make that the same size as the texture and the camera. And we're going to do a quick edit here. And so what that does is open up 
this it, it's made a projection of of the scene sort of render this out and it allows us to paint over the top of it and project that back on onto this image now there's a another caveat here so if i if i paint some orange over the, the top of this save that and if you hide the so I should save that again. If you hide the bottom layer and save it, it will just project that with the alpha onto the top, which which can be nice. Sometimes you get artifacts when you keep projecting the, the base image onto it, so it's better if you do this. But if we go back to Blender and apply, that projects it on there. Now, I should have switched this earlier to some real lighting here using our actual scene light. And there is um, something that we have to be aware of, though. If we go and quick edit this again, and even if I don't make any changes here, it's already saved that image, and I go back and I apply. Did you notice that slight difference? Let me do that again. I'm going to quick edit. Here, I'll do another color as well. Let's try blue. Certain colors show this more than others. So if I do some blue here, and I save that, I should have done that on another, it'll still work. And then I go back to Blender and I apply. There's that blue. Notice it, it kind of looks a little bit different. If we go and quick edit, again, I'm not gonna make any changes. Back in Blender, I apply, watch the colors closely. See that shift, it's shifted. The reason that's happening is because in our render settings, the color management is set with view transform, in this case AGX, which is great for you know rendering things with a certain look. But in our case, we want to have this be an accurate transfer. And so for this type of image, standard is the correct. Um, when we do normal maps later, I'll show you that you need to set that to raw. But for, for just standard colors, you just use standard. Um, so now let's try that again. If we do a quick edit here, again, if I go just back to Blender and apply. Now it didn't change the colors at all. Um, let's see, I'm going to go over to this, um, just the texture one now. I'm going to edit that externally and I just want to set the whole thing to a sort of neutral gray. <laughs> just through the, you know, the flat texture editor. And I'll save that and I will go and reload that. So now we just have flat gray. Um, this is a good way to just directly paint on the object. You can see Lightning Boy Studios tutorials on how to paint an arcane style of just painting in all the, the lighting yourself and you, you know creating a 3D sort of static scene, which is really cool. Um, but there's one more step to this that, that I'm really interested in, which is being able to paint normals this way. Um, so the first thing we need to do though is bake some normals from this this object. And actually, real quick, I want to bevel. Um, I'll just do a, a bevel modifier actually. And bevel about that much and apply that. So, in order to do normal projection, we need to use cycles. So we need to go to the render engine, change it from EV to cycles. Um, we need to create, we don't want, we'll, we'll keep this as a color information texture, so we're going to make a new texture. Grab an image texture here. We'll call it the normal map. Uh, 1024 is great. We want to change the color space on this one to non-color for that to behave correctly. And then over um, here, with this one selected, this is kind of fiddly here. It'll go with whatever texture you have selected. Notice this one has that gray one. This one is this new blank one. Um, and is this has this been saved? If we go back to texture and have normal map. Notice it, 
it uh, creates a new thing for each one of our predictions. You'll want to go back through and delete those later. But yeah, let's save the normal map as an image in that folder as well. And then in the cycles render engine here, we want to go down to bake. We want to bake the normal and we're going to do this in object space. So now we're ready to bake with that selected. And here at the bottom, it tells you how long. It goes pretty quick on smaller textures like this. And it baked the, the normals here. We can go look at it better over here. It has the object normals with the red, green, blue channels corresponding to the directions that these, these faces are facing. And then we can plug this back in um, to the normals of the, the principal BSDF here by adding a normal map node, connecting the color from this texture into that, and connecting the normals into the normals here. Now one thing we can do to test this, if we show what the normal map looks like here, or you know, let's go through the emission shader, actually, even though it does the same thing. Um, oh, that's why it's weird. I've got this on tangent space. So that's a good way to check it. Like, seeing these gradients and stuff there, it's like that. Shouldn't have a gradient. That's flat there. So we need to make sure that's an object space. There we go. So this converts this normal map into the actual normals of the, the faces here. And we want to make sure that this matches what the geometry, geometry is saying. So if you do Shift A and do Geo for this geometry you node, know, this has the face normals of the geometry. And we can plug that into the emission and we should see these be basically the same. There's a slight difference there. And so probably some of that comes from the calculations of the normal map with that. It's not perfect, but for what we're doing, that that's okay. It's close enough. It's got the right, right idea there. So we can get rid of that geometry node. And then we can look at this beveled box. And and another test is to just unplug this normal thing, make sure, like, yep, the lighting information isn't, like, dramatically changing when you plug it in. For example, if you forgot the normal map and just went straight from this texture into normals, then you get weird changes like that, right? Because we're, we're messing up the normals. They're not matching what they should be anymore. So, so that's something to check as you're doing this. But once you have um, the normal map on a texture here, the thing is we can paint on this texture and we can make some changes to it. So, I mean, one way you can do that... Oh, we're still in... See the ray tracing? We're still in cycles. Let's go change back to Eevee now because that was just to bake it. So now back in Eevee, um, one thing you absolutely can do is paint in Blender. You can... Use Shift X to use the eyedropper. You can hold it here. Notice what colors it's grabbing. Even though I'm I'm uh, mousing over the gray parts here, the texture that's open is a normal map, and so it's picking up the normal map colors. And so I could grab this color here, and I could paint that normal on more areas there, which is is pretty darn cool. And you can get some decent brushes with Blender and, and do some cool things with this. But I, I find this kind of clunky still, and I really like the quick edit thing. In order to do, the, to do the quick edit, though, we want to be showing the normals. And so we're going to go back to this view here. Except, well, we're, we're not going to go through the normal, normal map. We're going to just see the actual texture object normals before they get converted to the right stuff there. So by showing these actual t texture object normals here, we can go and paint on them using the projection technique. But we have a similar issue, um, like how when the colors were changing when we were painting the, the diffuse color map. If we do this with the standard view transform, uh, we're going to have some trouble. So if we open this up, and then it's already saved an image and we just go back and we apply. 
like how much that changed. Um, because this we we have a non-color image here with the the color space being non-color, we need to match that with the view transform so we don't have that problem. Um, so I'm going to undo that um, that projection so that we don't mess up our normals because we need to reference them while we're painting. And I'm going to go to the color management view transform and I'm going to set that to raw, which changes it quite a bit. But now if I go and do a quick edit and have this one here and go back to Blender and apply, nothing changed. So so we're good. We, we've got a one-to-one -one on, on the colors here. All right. So then we can use our brushes and get a, a non-photorealistic look that, that can be really interesting with the normals and create a sort of non-photorealistic lighting effect that is, is fun. It adds a more painterly look to, to all this. Um, and you can use blending tools to sort of create more um, kind of scratches and like a gradual change of some of these colors here. Then you just save it and go back over to Blender and apply and it's projected the, the normals on there and you can go back to your shader and switch to your principal BSDF and you can see the effect of those normals on the object, which is cool. That's that's nifty, and it's not something that you can easily do with like sculpting. The sculpting um, kind of normals that you bake onto an object can't really blend and and do things that don't make sense. They it can't really be an abstraction like this. I really like the power that that gives to make a painterly look that still accepts light from the environment. And so let's stop there for today. That's just to get things set up and get started, but I want to to show how to set up, you know, to, to paint a scene combining the normals with the diffuse colors in order to make an interesting, you know, um, scene object. In my case, I'm making this for a game. I want to make uh, grid blocks for a hexagon um, tactics game. So anyway, Thanks for following along. Oh, one more thing before we go. Um, this this has not saved this to disk. In fact, I'll show you. If I were to do Altar to reload that right now, it's like, ah, I lost everything. I lost the baking too. I forgot to even save the baking. That's really annoying. And if I undo it, uh, it's gone. I can't do that. However, um, I won't get everything back in this case, but this image that's over here, in Krita right now is still connected. It, it's saved that projection information, and if I apply, it has projected what it can onto there. And so if I go back over to the normal map and I um, do Alt S to save it, and then Alt R to load it, um, those parts got saved. I forgot that I didn't save the the projection of or the normal projection either. <laughs> so that's something that you have to you have to save your images separately. Any time that you do apply over here and apply your projection. If you like it, go over and save and reload your, your texture over there. But all right, we'll call that good for today. Uh, if you have any questions or any specific things you'd like me to go over in another video, please leave it in the comments and uh, I'd be happy to do more videos about this. Thank you.